Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic Touch, the show dedicated to making music on touch devices. I'm Nick Bat, editor of SonicState.com. I'm Gaz Williams, a producer and a musician. Right, it's been a little while since we've done uh, an episode. Uh, I hope you've all had a good festive season and New Year and all of those good things. I know uh, I am. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get Andy to make the slimming shot um, work, but I don't think it has. So I'm just going to let it all hang out. But anyway, um, so in recent months, there's been quite a lot of focus on the kind of groove box side of things, both in hardware and in software. And certainly on the iPad, there are a few apps which reflect that in terms of. I mean, when I say groove box, we're talking about something that can create beats and also create maybe a melodic line or other mm -hmm. sort of musical lines. aspects, bass lines, what have you. Yeah, so, um, bringing in sample loops as well into groove boxes. Absolutely. Yeah. So we thought we would um, have a look at a couple. So what have you got, Gaz? Well, there's a new Electrify NXT. That's the follow-up to Electrify, which has been out, I think, since about 2010. Uh, and that's a, that's a groove box, one that you can use uh, samples, and uh, it's got like a grid editor, and also um, there's a... An, in this now, there's an FM synthesizer built into it. Uh, it's got a very attractive interface. Let's, well, let's have a look, but it's... Pastel. Pastel. <laughs> well, it's like an Ableton Live type of affair, whereas, like, we're looking at, like, a blank screen here, but, like, if I was just to touch my finger on... There's, like, I don't know if you can make it. Oh, uh, yeah, there's yeah. a grid, right. There's okay. a grid. So that grid, if I was to double tap, it's like a, a blank canvas. If I was to double tap, it gives me an option of bringing in uh, a, like a, a sample, a, a drum track, or a, a synthesizer track. So if I was to bring in a drum track, there's one thing now. So it, this gives us like the components of that element. So that's like a grid edit. Yeah. It's a grid edit. But unfortunately, at the moment, no drum kits. So. You have, you have to, to build, build each right. drum kit. So, that's a, so I guess maybe once you build a drum kit, you can start to save things and build from there. But it is initially a, quite a long-winded way of So how do you load a sample started. then? Loading a the sample, we choose a pad. And now there's a browser bit at the bottom here. And uh, well, if I just go to the home here and double tap, here's the included loops. There's quite a lot of samples it comes with. So we could then say bass drums. And now, here, along here are our bass drums, and see a waveform of it. Oh, they're quite sort of uh, native instruments here, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, there's some nice ones. Contemporary stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, double tap, th and All right, it that's goes. loaded into the app. It's in there. And we've got, you know, reasonable amount of sample editing that we can do there. Uh, so let's bring in another one. Um, and I guess a snare would make sense now. So we'll bring in the snare. And... Uh, again, similar similar thing. We can audition it. Right. Okay. So we'll just use that for now. Uh, and let, let's just bring a hi hat in as well. Uh, blah blah blah. And we go in here. Hi hats. That'll do. <laughs> okay. So you can see straight away. A little bit long-winded to get going. Yeah. I mean, know. I like the, the, the it's whizzy graphics, but looking at it, it's lots of in and out and stepping, mm -hmm. yeah, shake it whereas, about. Yeah, whereas, you know, you might just want to have a selection of kits as a starting yeah. point and then go in and edit. So, okay. I've already lost my, my, my muse, so mm. you're going to have to recreate it for me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. And now it's a fairly standard thing of putting things in. You know, we can just tap things in. But there is something that's worth pointing out. And that's like, uh, let's just put in, uh, I'll just do a really basic, uh, just do a, a really basic, just for just a regular beat. Just eight, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if I long tap on something. Um, oh, it's a bit fiddly, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be quite precise. Ah, there we go. You get like a, a velocity. It's good when it happens. Yeah. So you can edit, all right, okay. I yeah. like, the, I like the, the, the idea of it, but it does look like it's not quite yeah, I, look, I'm knocking out the beat there. Yeah, rather and, than... And one we notice as well. See, so that's... That you have needs, to do it with your finger now, do you? Yeah, I'm really struggling with that. Um, but y you get the, ed the idea. We've got the grid edit here. But there is some nice features that are, that are worth mentioning. Um, we can add effects, double tap effects, and then we've got a you know, pretty good choice. And they sound okay, these effects. Is that for the whole part, the whole part or individual sounds? This is for the individual sound. Oh, okay. Yeah, now what happens is, we'll see in a moment now, like let's see if I bring in a phaser, for instance. Um, a parameter, if I, if I double tap on a parameter 
Um, it lets me, whatever parameter, pretty much most of the parameters within this part, we can edit the parameter sequence. So, All right, so that's familiar. That's sort of yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see that. So these, the, the, the this is like the amount of that particular parameter. It's like hyper edit in the old school kind of DAW MIDI stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay, and and also you get you could do it like that, or I could play it, and I could drop it into record, and I could use this. Uh, oh, as a sort of slider. As that's a slider, it. yeah. And then we can see it's. Uh, What's the effect on that? It sounds like it's a bit. Um, it's a phaser. Right. Okay, so or something that's a bit more uh, obvious. Okay, let's make that a bit obvious. So, so say done there. Let's go back to the main. Um, let's do pitch. And then we'll ah, say okay. edit parameter sequence and play. Oh, that's neat. Yep. And you can stack those up as you would do to end up with uh, sort of multiple. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. Right. So I'll say done there. That's quite powerful. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite nif nifty. Um, also, we've got like a crossfader. Now, I think this is uh, an idea borrowed from the Electron Octotrack, right. whereby you can assign a bunch of, uh, say, effect settings. Store them, store store them in preset and then scene. crossfade, morph, morph, morph or crossfade. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, you could jump, you could say, you could pan up to the A, the a there. And down to the F, right, and, okay. Yeah, and then change. So while it's on here, you could jump back out there, go to B, and then crossfade up. You know. So, and is that sort of like on a clip-based automation thing? So it, it works in clip-based automation rather than linear. Yes. I think that's a real-time performer. Actually, I don't actually think that is currently sequenced. I don't okay. think you can sequence that. I think you do that as a, as a part of a performance. Um, but anyway, the thing, the idea is, you see, as we jump back to the main window, we we see that actually it's. It's actually rendered it as a little audio file. Ah, okay. So it doesn't play it as a... Well, this is a trick that a lot of uh, uh, I iOS and iPad apps yeah. used. So it it's immediately cuts down the amount of CPU. Yeah, I think they're calling it auto-freeze or something. Well, it's, it's, you get that on um, GarageBand. Garage well, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so we can start building. Now, if I wanted to sort of do a drum beat directly underneath it, let's have a look. So can we put loops in or...? Back to all blank. Ah. So really, the way around that then is uh, if a long press on here opens up this little thing, I'm going to remove that, and instead long press on there, I'm going to duplicate it. So right, because then at least we've got the kit. Yeah, so that, that's the thing about this, is each part, because it'll render into its own little audio file, it, it, it's not really like a kind of, it's not a track that's sharing like a VST plugin. Right. They're actually... Each, each pattern is its, its own separate instance. Yeah, right. which has got some benefits and some negatives. The so negative right. being that you'd have to set them up each time. So it looks like version 1.01 1 .01 needs to be save kits, right? Because that's got to be just like an XML description file or something like that. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I think it, I mean, I think there will be kits coming. I think it's... Uh, this is early days. And speaking of early days, there's numerous things that we're actually missing, like quite crucially, there's no undo at the moment. Right. And that's okay in some cases, but when there are certain editing things and you kind of wish Have you got, undo. is there a, a, like a demo song or anything you could load up just so we can hear what, what it can sound like with a few parts in? Okay, so here's something that I prepared earlier. Touch demo. It takes a moment to load in. I was just going through and rendering the visual loops again from yeah. the document, okay. So we can kind of see how it's got a little bit of that Ableton Live paradigm here, so, like the session view. So the, in this way, this is the scene, and then the linearity is down that way. That, that's right. It. You just not just the, it, it's re-rendering all the files. Well, and that's that's what happens, you see, because the, it, you, as you adjust the tempo, it essentially sort of automatically ah, time. Okay. So I'll put the tempo back up. Oh, no. Let's leave the tempo there, actually. So, but along the side here is like what's essentially the scene selector. Um, and I can stretch it over uh, periods of... Oh, so then that will play the entire sequence? Yes. Oh, that's neat. And that is neat. I do like that. Um, okay, so I'll start that playing. Do I detect a bit of gas bass there? Maybe. So I'd, that means you can bring your own stuff in? Yeah, I did it in Loopy, use the audio copy function, and then you can bring it in by... Uh, audio copy. Audio right. copy, yeah. 
So just to get through, you can't actually record audio into this and make your own loops. You have to bring it from external sources, right? Yeah, exactly, okay. yeah. But it is quite nice that it is automatically time stretching. So that's kind of pretty cool. So this is the idea of it. And then uh, the, the, the things within it are, the actual instruments within it are like a sample uh, player like we've seen. And also there is a quite a quirky FM synthesizer. So I'll show you how that, what that looks like. If we double tap, I'm going to choose this here. And let's just add a few notes into here. Um, um, Almost a jingle bell special. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I could drag along. But I can't move any notes. Right. I would have to take can it you, out. Can you, you can't undo that either. No, nope, no undo. This is very freeform. So this is one algorithm on the, on the synthesizer, Yeah, right? so then we can go here and we could just flick through different algorithms where the different operators are in different orders, four operator at FM. But also you can randomise everything. Ooh. So... So you can see it's basic, it's quite, but I, I, there's some nice. Again, it's got it's got sound. some nice and also some really sort of nice interface ideas as well. Yeah, you know, and uh, oh, sorry. So we can see we can bring the um, uh, an envelope as well. Right? Envelope in there, and like yeah, along the bottom there, inadvertently I've opened that. But there's a mi there's a mixer, pan, oh, yeah, music solo. solo. Right, yeah. okay. There's a global effect, so two chaos pads and. These are like little memories for effects memories. And there's, there's a like lot a, of stuff in here, really, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's a, and a master effect there with a kind of compressor across the outputs. So, And presumably you can render it out as a sort of master file so that you've then got... No. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can use it in audio bus or and record right, it down through Does to it something work with else. Um, background app? Up interrap audio as well, or is it audio bus only? I think it will work with interrap audio, but um, I haven't tried that yet. Okay. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, really, I think maybe just to sort of wrap up about this in a way is I think that it's quite ambitious, but it doesn't quite feel finished yet. I think there's a few omissions that, although I, I've been looking for uh, an Ableton Live sort of light iPad version. Yeah, and this is possibly the closest that I've seen to it in terms of the layout, and I think it's very attractive, and there's many good elements and design things built in. But the lack of undo... And the lack of kits seems to be a bit of an oversight as well. Yeah, but I have... It should be easy to fix, though. Yeah, and I've talked to the developer, and both of those are high on the agenda, so I think we'll see those coming soon. So I think... Really, this is one to watch. I think it may be a bit early at the moment to, to recommend it. We often see this, don't they, when we look at a kind of something that does, a re trying to do something really major and all-encompassing. Yes. Sort of version one, yeah. not quite, and then, but then presumably what happens is people will buy it and then there'll be some momentous and it, momentum and impetus and we'll see. Yeah, and I'd like to see that. This is, after all, developed by a single person, so there's an awful lot of work gone into it, but... Uh, and, 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 and he is keen for people to feedback and say what they'd like, and, and he is, right. he, he's actually asked me to sort of say that, because so, I talked to him yesterday about it. So I, I thought, that's kind of nice. So whatever criticisms he might have, he's very open to, to try. And is it. there any uh, MIDI implementation or uh, that kind of stuff going on? There's some simple MIDI. Uh, there is, let's have a look what we got, options. Um, no, uh, MIDI, you can, you can, MIDI note sources and you can sync it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So you can sync it. That's yeah, yeah. Right. Um, not yet implemented, but on the list again is um, MIDI mappable. So controller, so yeah. you can start tweaking. That's currently not in there. And what about the CPU load on your, because you're running this on the latest iPad, aren't you? Seems to be pretty good. I think partly helped by the fact that when you play everything, they're all kind it's of rendered, rendered into right. very small little chunks here. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's 
interesting, good. I think it's a beautiful yeah, looking no, piece of software. Yeah, no, there are some aspects to it that do mm. look really good, but it just feels like it needs a little more push to get it to I, I up think to so. scratch, right? Yeah, yeah, before you could use it sort of seriously. I think I would encourage people who are interested in it to, to, to get it, though, because it does offer these unique workflow ideas. And I guess if you're using your own loops, you could use it to build up your own arrangements and kind of actually yes. just perform at yes. some of your own things. So but mm -hmm. perhaps starting from scratch from composition, it looks a little, just a little bit frustrating and, and more hin there's, there's some barriers to creativity. Yeah, I, right. I'd say. And, you know, there is this slightly long winded process. If you want to bring your own loops in, you'd have to do it through the dreaded iTunes file kind of nonsense, you know. Right. You know, where's that SD card slot full of samples, you know, bang, but no, that's the... So how much is this then? Uh, £13.99, $20. Okay, so, I mean, most of these kind of larger groove box things cost around about that much, so it's certainly yeah. no more expensive. No, than no, and it does offer a lot for the money, I think, so... And you, you, know. do, you do seem to get quite a lot of content for it as well, so that's... Yeah, 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 so I think it's... It's definitely very promising. So one to watch. So the next one we're looking at is a kind of pretty different beast. It's, a, it's still a groove machine and it does drums and synthesis, but it's very graphically different and a sort of different sound world. And that's mm. called Stroke, Stroke machine. machine by Wolfram Frank. Now, Stroke Machine did have us thinking it was perhaps something completely different than a groove box, I must admit. And I did actually just uh, email Wolfram, uh, who is the guy behind uh, a lot of the, the, the Waldorf software arm. So things like Lecter, uh, what else did he do? Uh, Largo, uh, Attack, which Attack, was yeah. a fantastic VST plugin. Quite, what, 10, 12 years ago or something? But so yeah, this I think this is his first uh, foray into the application world. Anyway, the, the name came mm -hmm. about is they were, he was talking with a friend, they were talking strike and hit and bang and all of those things. And then all those adjectives were taken. So they came up <laughs> with stroke and it's definitely a groove machine. So stroke machine it was. And I think they see the funny side of it too. <laughs> so let's take a look. Immediately, it's like a, ooh, <laughs> it's a cornucopia of color. It reminds me mm. of something you might be able to create in something like Lemur, you know, mm. that you might make yourself. Mm. And uh, it is a very vibrant mm. uh, affair. So what we have, we have two zones. Basically, this is the voice mode. We've got up to 12 voices. Each one of these is an individual voice. This is a kind of 808 kit. As you can see here. And for no samples though, is it? This is there are no, no, there are samples. Oh, there are so samples. if I go, say, for instance, this bass drum, yeah, oscillator one, I can say oh. it can be triangle, saw, pulse, cool. or sample. If I want to go in here, there are some samples. If I come right back, uh, for instance, Oberheim, he, he's got the DMX and the DX sample, so you can get the kicks and the crash and what have you, all sorts of stuff if you want it in there. Now, if we go kick, maybe change that. In fact, I think I might have already done that. So, so now we play it. Yeah, I've got, I already loaded that in. So you've got mm -hmm. a sample, or it can be, like we say, a waveform. Mm -hmm. And we've got two oscillators, a noise source. So maybe the thing to do is if I do load the default kit, then I'm just going to end up with a bunch of mm -hmm. basic sounds. So you can hear, so starting from nothing, effectively, mm. two oscillators. So if I wanted to change, I can change that to a saw. I can change. You can see what I can do. There's quite a lot of stuff that I can do with the sound. Then I've also got these other aspects, which are things like transients, which change the front end of the sound. If I go back to that sign, it'll be a bit. Got noise. Essential with drums. Uh, filters, all sorts of, they're great, there's loads of different kinds of noise as well. And this is on a per, per sound out of each of the 12 sounds. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Oops, it's a little bit fiddly, maybe if I... I'm using mm. this with a MIDI keyboard here because it does actually work with MIDI, which is kind of nice, there's a sort of assignment, so I'm using this little CME keyboard. So anyway, yeah, I come back, I've got all these different kinds of kinds of sound, pink, pink noise. So I've got loads mm. of stuff I can do. I'll tell you what mm. it really reminds me of a little bit is of the um, the Clavier Nord drum. Oh, okay. Where you've got these, in, but it's, it's sort of deeper and far more kind of, mm. uh, you've got far more ability to sort of mix things up. Mm. And then you've got a drive unit, so we can switch that. Let's switch that off and see what happens. Let's do it. In Turn the drive off. Turn it. Yeah. 
Whoa. You know, I mean, Musty. all sorts of things that you can do to the sound. Then oh. you've got two envelopes, you've got yep. an LFO, and the LFA is kind of cool. You can assign the LFO to all these parameters. You just say, right, I want it to, uh, let's say, um, let's say do the drive amount. I mean, you can, you, so, yeah. <laughs> so the idea is you can yeah. modulate all these parameters, wow. and you can create a sort of quite a wide variety of sounds. And there's mm -hmm. also so you've got twelve voices here, mm -hmm. then you've also got a melody. So you can then, right? If I can get, if I just, there's my melody. So I've got this melody part that I can change as well, which again gives me even more things I can load in. So and I is could that tw load twelve melody tracks then. Well, I think so. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and I can bring in samples, my own samples. I've got these various pre preset samples. Uh, let's have a look. Um, there's a bunch of thing things here that I can sort of add in various oscillators. Let's bring this right, and then maybe put a saw to. Or I tell you what, we'll make that a pulse. You know how fond I am of pulse width <laughs> modulation. Yeah. And then I can set the LFO, say assign the LFO to, um, let's say, pulse width. Let's see if that works. Did I? No, not really happening there. <laughs> well, let me turn that up a bit. Yeah, I've got a bit of pulse width modulation going on now. I play this. Nice. So, and then I can create all of these parts, and I've also got this sequencer. If I go back to Perk, I can just record this stuff in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, essentially a step sequencer. I can create a, any number of bars, mm -hmm. up to eight, I believe. And I've got a step sequencer mode, so I can then Three. copy and paste. I mean, again, this is really quite a garish interface, but it does work well in yeah. low light situations. Yeah. I, what I found with it when I was using it was initially that, that garishness, I was like, whoa. But after I started getting used to it, I started to really like it. And I was doing it in bed and, and with the lights off. And it Popular was, with the missus. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, Ellie, was, I'm just creating another groove. She was helping me. Oh, well, I'm not sure I want to know anymore. Um, but the thing that I found is when I started messing with it, I was really into the synthesis capabilities of it. And I was thinking, oh, it'd yeah. be great if this was MIDI. And it doesn't say anywhere, because if you go into the global setting, mm -hmm. it just it gives you, you've got WIST, mm -hmm. you've got background audio, uh, and that's it. It doesn't mention anything about MIDI. But yeah. as I said, what I did is I created, I've got this keyboard, and I just plugged it in. So and as I as I go down, sorry, the uh, how to find my oh, I'm too far down. Too far down. You can see that's the sound I just created, and I've created you know I can access all the individual sounds, and as I go up the keyboard, so they're mapped essentially across mm -hmm. the keyboard in octaves. How does the melody work then? If there's 24 different melody, uh, sorry, 12 melody tracks. I don't know the really? answer to that, Gaz. I'm afraid <laughs> I, I I really couldn't say. Okay. I, I, I got. I did get into it and, and started to have some fun. You can record mm. your outputs, you can export. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool about it is um, you've got all of these kits. So if we go back here, I've got some saved here, but if you look, there's preset kits that are just, there's tons and tons of them and they've yeah. got all these kind of built-in patterns. You get an idea of what it can do. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? It does sound good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, there's a ton of things. Now, let me just load up something that I did, because this is something that I found really cool. I took uh, one of those presets and I created my own sort of 80s vibe, which it really works. And this also shows off one of the other things, which is the um, effect. So now if I come back here and I go to sound mode, uh, you can see that, um, if I actually, if I go to melody, that's my melody. If I can find me, uh, yeah, I've got to go there. There's my melody. It's a sort of pulse width kind of thing going on with the LFO modulating. So if you look, I'm modulating uh, the pulse width at some point. I guess I still am. But <laughs> now we've also got four separate effects buses which have dynamics and modulation space, and these can all be. They've all got individual little presets in them. And what you do when you're in the set, this, this, and this is something that took me a little while to figure out. I saw these effects and I couldn't figure it out, and it's in the amplitude section. So what you do is you assign it to one of the effects buses in the amplitude section, and then you send how much mix you want. Right. And so four separate buses. Four separate buses. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, you've, you've got drive and individual things. And, mm. But I just found that in terms of making a noise, let me see. 
Let's see if I can find it. I did actually load another another sound in here, which I'm trying to trying to find now. You're in the melody mode there? Yep. yep. There ah, it is. Ah, I see. I've got another sound in here. Like a piano. Which was kind of like a piano thing. And this is again, this is a sample I just loaded, EQ'd sine wave, right. Stein wave, which was one of these here. I forget where I actually got it from. But it's an included one. But you can include your own as well. And I think you can edit the start point of the sample on this fader here. I mean, I'm playing this via this MIDI keyboard. And I must admit, the triggering is a bit hit and miss. And I did find mm -hmm. this using, while I, I, I like using external MIDI because it's easier to use than pressing these little buttons. But mm -hmm. I did find that the triggering was a bit hit or miss. So I'm not quite right. sure why that is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and also when I play it, so I've got this loop that I play, my 80s loop. I can record something on that, say, if I'm in my right notes. Add loop that. Well done, sir. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, I, I just, I really enjoyed it, actually. I mean, yeah. th there's, th there is more besides. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I just found it something that I could really get on with. I found the, sort of mm. the sound world it yeah. inhabited really just sort of gelled with me, and I wanted mm -hmm. to use it perhaps less as a sequencer, although it's got all these sequencing modes in, mm -hmm. more as a sound module. Mm. And so, you know, for instance, if I was using this, say, with the uh, iConnect that we used, and yep. I had it as a, as a way of getting audio back into my system, I just, as a drum synth yeah. and as a basic synthesizer, I just really dig it, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the interface is going to take a little bit of getting used to mm. for some, <laughs> um, just a couple more things while I'm on the uh, modulation thing. So um, you can also assign these envelopes. You've got two envelopes, and you can assign those to all of these parameters. Again, you just kind of dial in the amount of plus or minus. And that's one thing mm. that I did notice with this, where some touch interfaces allow you to kind of pull out and get a kind of a wider view of data. Yes. This doesn't. And it's something that's sort of a bit missed because, you know, looking yeah. at some of these tiny little points, they're, right. they're really hard to hit. And if you had, like, on the... Um, it's Thor, Thor, isn't it? That yeah. Where you can just touch and you pull away and then you get this kind of circle. It would benefit yeah. from some of those touch yeah, interfaces. MIDI fit. Designer Pro has got that very nice thing as well. And I'd like to see that more implemented on it lots just, of apps. It just feels like that yeah. there's a, f a few little bits and yeah, pieces yeah. that could be improved in terms of the touch mm -hmm. interface. But mm. I, I really dig it, actually. And I, and I think Wolf and Frank should be... Uh, Stroke machine or not, even if it's a bit of a funny name, it's 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 a really nice piece of equipment. I mean, I'm running mm. this on uh, an iPad 4, yeah. uh, which is the one before the, yours, which yeah. is so it's not the super fast one, but mm -hmm. it's the next one down. And I did find that it was running out. I mean, it does say you could, should be able to get 12 voices of percussion and 12 voices of melody. Mm -hmm. That's the theoretical maximum. Right. But whether or not you'd actually get that, I did notice there were a few things dropping, and you found the same thing. Well, I found it. I found a similar thing when I was plugging a MIDI right. keyboard in. That was missing. It just wasn't picking up all. It of was the... missing some notes. Yeah, so I'm not um, sure why. But that it was. is doing a lot because I mean, mm -hmm. if you think we've got twelve voices yeah. of this kind of quite a complex nature, mm -hmm. and you know that's quite. Yeah, it's quite. Let's see. Oh. I've noticed a few quirks myself, which may be early quirks to do with when you're trying to load presets in. Sometimes it doesn't work. You have to. You have to quit and come back. Quit yeah. and come back. So probably version. You know, early versions. Well, syndrome. this is, I mean, this was released on the 20th of December. Yeah. And there's already a 1.01 .01 update. So, mm. you know, he's obviously on the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And has fixed a few things. And apparently, mm -hmm. you know, from the notes I was reading, you know, the update fixed a bunch of stuff. But yeah. I didn't, I don't know what that was because I jumped in at 1.01. .01. Right, right. Um, but I really do like the way it works. And if I could just show you one other thing with the interface. There's this little side sl slot here, which is called a sign. So I can assign, say, maybe a pitch wheel a mod wheel, again, to any one of these parameters. So, uh, I don't know, let's try um, uh, oscillator FM, for instance. And then come out of the assign. Now, <laughs> and now I, I, I've got various different possibilities. I've got velocity, key, randoms, and uh, bend and wheel. So it allows me to modulate the synthesizer in terms of performance as well from mm. incoming MIDI data, which I just, you know, it's, it's, I like it. And I'm not sure whether the MIDI aspect of it is this keyboard or, you know, whether they're, it just it, it isn't yeah. quite up to scratch yet. But right. I can sort of forgive it because I just like the way it sounds. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you can work 
as a if you prefer it as a step time anyway. yes absolutely yeah and with when you go into the step sequencer um, you can do things like copy and pasting bars or voices or what have you Good. and then you've got the ability to load and save all these kits and like I said there are a lot of kits here mm. if I just sort of throw a few more in there's just some really <laughs> Got a nosebleed. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and there are uh, lots and lots. Some by Wolfram, some by various other people, and it really does sort of show off. Uh... What's a speed track? Can we have one? I think we should. What's that speed? Where, where's that? Speed. Speed intro. Yes. Oh, it all sounds cool. The only thing I did find didn't work was this pattern mode. I didn't really kind of understand mm -hmm. how this worked. Yeah. I don't know whether or not there's a... I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'd probably have to read... Oh, oh, there we go. So there is obviously a way of pattern sequencing, but mm -hmm. I have to confess, I'm not really a pattern guy, so I didn't get into that. So if you like to change stuff together, it looks like that is possible, but I'm afraid I didn't have the time to... Um, research that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm totally sorry. <laughs> but um, you can get it. It's by Wolfram Frank. Uh, I think it's Frank Software. Yep. Frank with a, K, with a K and an E on the mm -hmm. end. And it's 19.99 US dollars, 13.99. So basically, you're kind of Same average. price as Electrify. Exactly. But yeah. But yeah, well worth it. If you like those kind of sounds, uh, then you, know, and you want to do this kind of thing. And you can just see that. And why wouldn't you, frankly? Uh, one thing I would like to mention, you can also save individual sounds and load individual sounds as well as kits. So you nice. do get that level of granularity. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I just wanted to check on this, because I, what I'd done with the bass drum is I'd sent this to Effects Bus 4. And if I go into Effects, and I've got this kind of hard dynamics going on. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're getting that sort of woofy quality to the bass drum. If mm -hmm. I just go to Solo, which you can also Solo. <laughs> Perhaps I not quite that much. So you've got quite a lot of tonal variation just yeah. with those sort of insert effects as well. So yeah. it's yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of I'm very pleased with it. And I think, you know, for me, <laughs> yeah. it sort of definitely takes the biscuit of the two that we've looked at. Mm -hmm. Of course there are other workstations and groove boxes yep. type stuff, but if you want to have a bit of fun with a kind of this sound world, it, it, I, I think it's fair to say it's quite a Germanic kind of sound world, but <laughs> uh, and it's one I inhabit freely myself. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's as mentioned in earlier, the uh, interface may take a little bit of getting used to, but I wouldn't let that put you off. No. So that's it for another episode. I do hope you've enjoyed what we've brought you. As ever, please do leave any of your comments below. We do read them and we take them very personally when you say bad things, but that's OK. <laughs> Don't let that stop you. Um, so that was it. That was Sonic Touch, episode 28. First one of a new year, 2014. I'm Nick Batt. I'm Cass Williams. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.